Good morning, everyone, Good morning. again. <laughs> so I have been given 15 minutes, so let's hope that I can keep it down and still praise God doing it. So this morning, we're going to be out of uh, 2 Thessalonians 3, and the end of this uh, chapter, we come to the final benediction. And this final benediction represents Paul assuring the Thessalonian church that God is still with them and God still loves them and that we need to have peace in knowing that God is still with us. Amen. And so this morning we're going to go through that a little and we're going to go through this idea of having peace with God and of God. And so we're going to we're going to, we're just going to have a lot to talk about in just these three short verses. It's going to be three shorts, but they're going to be very impactful. I I believe and I pray so. So, first things first, let's read the scripture. In 2 Thessalonians 3 uh, verses 16 through 18 says, "Now may the Lord of peace himself give you uh, peace at all times and in every way the Lord be with you all I Paul write this greeting in my own hand which is the distin distinguishing mark in all my letters and this is how I write the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all that's very impactful I believe and when I read it I get chills all around because I know that God is still with us. Amen. This past weekend, if you don't know, I'll tell you now that I got LASIK eye surgery. And it's fantastic. I love it. But I'm not here gonna be I'm not here talking about my LASIK. I'm gonna be here talking about my grandma. My grandma and uh, now her friend has given me permission to talk about this. Uh, but while we were at the Bloomington office getting ready to have my LASIK, we were sitting down in the office chairs waiting. And my grandma beforehand uh, went and done something else. And we were, uh, we were, she was preoccupied and she, there was a lot going on this morning, that morning. And when she got done, she came back and she sat down with me and we, we were talking for about 30 minutes. And then she realized her phone, uh, her new iPad was missing. And we ran all around looking for it. And I had like about two minutes until my, my uh, surgery time was supposed to happen. And I ran downstairs where she was looking for it, couldn't, couldn't find it, went back upstairs. So I couldn't find it. And she went downstairs looking all around the hospital trying to find her tablet. And it was humiliating, it was stressful, it was, oh my goodness, where is the tablet? Someone took it, someone stole it. What, why did someone take this? And she was all anxious and she was all worried. I was anxious and I was worried for her because I'm like, well, this isn't a, the tablet isn't cheap. And we do not have peace of mind. We do not have this peace of knowing, well, God's got this. And so we had the entire hospital looking for the tablet. And we were, everyone knew about it. If you talked to someone in the, uh, in the hospital, someone knew, oh, yeah, we're looking for a tablet. Everyone knew about it. And so afterwards, we left. We went home. I slept for five hours. <laughs> and then I slept for more hours. I was tired. After having surgery, you're tired. Uh, even if it's just eye surgery, it's nothing really. Uh, so afterwards, we got up and she drove me to my post-op appointment. And on our way to the post-op appointment, she gets a call. And beforehand, we, she was heartbroken. She was, she was, it was hard for her to really accept the fact that someone took this tablet. She did not have peace. We, to, even to that point, we did not have peace. 
But then we realized that, that, that we, should off, we should really rely on God. But then God answered the prayers. We, we prayed a lot. We, God answered the prayers. Someone called my grandma and said, are you Joyce Graffy? And she said, yes. She's like, well, I found your tablet. I live here in Champaign. God answered prayers and realize that we need to have peace of mind, knowing that God's got this. If we rely in God, God has this. Even if it's not as, as profound as someone calling you while you are in your deepest moments, someone saying, I have found your tablet and I'm wanting to get, I want to get back to you. Even if we don't have this, this profound statement saying, God, here I am, I'm God and here I am, it, it, maybe that's not going to happen. But knowing that peace of mind, knowing that God is going to lift you up in your distresses, that someone who is going to give you assurance that God is still with you, that God is going to be with you no matter what. And that's what the Thessalonian churches were trying to find. Before Paul, they were crazy anxious. We read in chapter 2 that they were starting to have wickedness. They were worried. They were, they were creating lawlessness. They were disobeying the law. They were, they were disobeying God's commands. They were uh, creating havoc. They were, uh, they were just doing all sorts of different bad things that we would consider. And they, and they, they thought at this time that God had forsaken them. That they, they were reading a letter that was supposedly Paul that God had already came and already left. But Paul, he says, don't listen to that. Don't listen to it because God says that when I come, you will know it. All eyes will see when God comes. His glory will shine no matter how dark this world may be. God is going to shine a light. Light shines and it, uh, it, it overruns darkness. We will know when God comes. And so Paul is reassuring them that this is how he writes. And so this morning, we're going to get now into the sermon. <laughs> now, we're going to go through two different ideas of peace. And so we're, we just got finished talking about what peace is and how we understand it to be. Uh, the Greek word for peace, uh, in the Greek word, I think we have it up here, is Arion. Arion, however you want to pronounce it. I don't know if it's up there or not. But it, it talks about having, being one that was once at odds with another. We were once at odds with God, not believing in God, saying, God, you cannot handle my situation. But then being once at odds, coming together and saying, God, you have this. You can handle my situation. I give it to you, God. Take it and hold on to it and lift me up. May, may your glory be shining through this. So be one with God. That is what peace is. And it's being united. So this morning, I'd like all of us to have peace, being united with God this morning. A world, worldly peace and a godly peace. But this morning, we're talking about a godly peace. Uh, the two different types of pieces, a peace with God and a peace of God. And so the, the, the peace of God deals with the eternal salvation, the etern eternal life of salvation. And so that is with our relationship with God. And so when we accept Christ into our hearts, that is the peace with God. We accept Him. 
enter our lives. We find some of these things in Romans 5. Let's go to Romans 5 real fast. And Romans 5, 1 through 5 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of God, of the glory of God, not only so that we also have glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, character hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God loves, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who had has been given to us. We have been given the Spirit, knowing that the Spirit is with us. And that's going to be coming into our next point, is peace of, with God. No, <coughs> peace of God, I'm sorry. Uh, but we're not getting there yet. But then we, has, then we have 1 Peter 3, that talks about the peace with God still. And the peace that we find with him. So 1 Peter 3, 11 starts off saying that we must turn from evil and do good. I'm sorry. Wait. That we must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and per pursue it for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers, but for the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And first look at that, we read that while it's kind of difficult when we don't rely on God to accept Him and to uh, have Him, but if we do not accept God, then how can He work in our lives and help produce uh, good things? Well, we really can't. Because God, if we're not accepting God, God cannot accept us. He, he loves us unconditionally. Don't get me wrong. He loves us, but he cannot, he cannot be in our lives if we don't accept him into our lives. He cannot walk with us if we don't walk with him. And so that is the point is the peace of God is now that we accept him into our lives and now we're going to walk with him. Okay? And we're going to walk with him and we're going to accept him into our lives and have him serve us and have us serving him most of all. But he serves us by giving us this peace of mind knowing that God is with us. Colossians 3.15 says, Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts since as members of the body we are called to peace. Romans 16.20 says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. John 14. I have a lot of verses here this morning. Stay with me. John 14.25.27 uh, says, all I have spoken to you while with you, but the advocate of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will touch you in all things and will remain in you from everything I have said to you. Peace I have with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives, but not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Have peace with Christ. Christ came to serve us. Now it's time for us to rely on Him, saying, well now you have given us salvation on the cross. Now we have to accept it. A wise saying from a very knowledgeable man, and a man that I look up to, well, it's first God, then this guy. He's a wonderful guy, and I love the TV show, Andy Griffith. 
You all may know him on the TV show. I love, I love how he raises his child and how he always seeks God out. And he always tries to do the best of things. And he says, I firmly believe that in every situation, no matter how difficult, God extends grace greater than the hardships that we encounter. And strength and peace of mind that we have the Lord and we have the Lord to make us grow in any situation. Any situation that we've ever been before, even if it's greater than we have ever had, God's peace, if we allow it, will be on us and we can accept Him into our lives and say, God, take it. God, let God be on the cross for us and take that pain that we have because we have never, we were never supposed to have it, but we denied God in the garden. We denied God throughout our lives and we said, God, you do not have a place in my heart. But this morning, I'd like all of us to accept and say, God, I want you to be in my heart this morning. I want you to be a big piece of my heart. And when we take the communion this morning, I want us to really think, how is God going to be in our hearts this week? And how are we going to allow him to rule our lives this, this week? This morning, especially, and throughout this week. How can we praise God through the peace that we have with him? And if we need growth, someone here can help and give us direction. That's what we are supposed to be doing. As Christians, as the body of Christ, to help one another and to grow one another. And maybe not here, but you have someone else in mind that can help you. But I want all of us to seek out peace this week, knowing that God is with us this week. Let's go into prayer and then we can we can have the closing song and so forth. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we ask that you are with us this morning, that you are in our hearts knowing that we have you, that we can accept you into our hearts. Let us learn from the Thessalonian church that we have you still, that you have not left us, that you can still be with us. That you have not abandoned us, but you have shown us love. Lord, we ask that you extend this grace and love and peace to all of us here this morning, knowing that you are with us, that you have not forsaken. Lord, we love you and we praise you all the days of our lives and everything that we do. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.